truth. Does the press tell the truth? Forget the press, meet the truth. Seek truth, ask questions. Forget the press, meet the truth. Watch Meet the Truth every Sunday morning, 8 to 9 a.m. Discover the truth the press does not want you to know about. Money is debt, gold is your bet. Forget the press, meet the truth. Watch Meet the Truth every Sunday morning, 8 to 9 a.m. Well, this is the first time I've been to Pensacola, and of course it's a very sad and tragic time with this oil spill which threatens your beautiful coastline and your fishing. I spent the last couple of days driving around with the former sea captain, a fisherman, and as I say, it's a very sad time. But we're talking about two taps here. There's the tap on the oil well, which is difficult to, to cap, to stop, and there's the tap that's delivering fluoride into your drinking water. And that could be turned off tomorrow if there was political will. And I believe to get that political will, we need to inform a lot of people in Pensacola that this is a bad idea. Fortunately, there's a 28-minute videotape out there that my son produced called Professional Perspectives on Water Fluoridation, where we have about 15 scientists from around the world, Sir Ian Chalmers from England, uh, Arvid Carlson, the Nobel Prize winner from Sweden, uh, two former scientists at the EPA, Three scientists that helped to write the very important work by the National Research Council, uh, which was published in 2006 and indicated there are many health problems with fluoride exposure. I believe if the citizens of Pensacola had seen that videotape before they voted on this practice of water fluoridation, there's no way they would have countenanced this. And in fact, so often what happens is that the public is not informed. The press doesn't do a very good job of getting in-depth coverage. It's, it's very superficial. And couple that with a denigration of the opponents, characterizing the opponents as uh, wackos, a flat earth society, not, uh, not being scientific, not being, uh, of being emotional. Um, and I've spent the last 14 years trying to redress that, that uh, well-qualified scientists have looked at this argument of fluoridation and that they've concluded that it's, it's not a good medical practice because you can't control the dose. Once you put it in the water, you can't control who gets it. It includes the very young, the very old, the very sick, the people with poor nutrition who should not be getting fluoride. Uh, there's no individual supervision by a doctor, no health agency is tracking side effects. So it's a bad medical practice. Secondly, it's a bad ethical practice. It violates a very important modern medical ethic, which is the informed consent, the right of an individual to have informed consent to medication. A doctor is supposed to let the patient know what the downside of a drug is, uh, and what the benefits are, and then the patient is supposed to balance what he's heard or she's heard, and then choose for themselves. What a doctor cannot do is to say, drink this glass of water, it's got a drug in it which is good for your teeth, drink it. You can't force the patient to do that. Uh, in the case of fluoridation, we're allowing a local government, or sometimes a state government, to do to everyone what an individual could doctor can do to no one, force them to take a drug. And to make matters even worse, the Food and Drug Administration, which normally regulates drugs, and this is the most prescribed drug in American history, it's going every day to 184 million Americans in their drinking water. So the most prescribed drug has never been approved by the FDA. It's never gone through the randomized clinical trials which the FDA requires for efficacy and safety for any new drug. It's never been through that. There is no question that fluoride is extremely toxic. It's wreaked havoc on the environment, and where it occurs naturally in India and China, it's wrecked havoc on the lives of people, crippling their bones, uh, lowering their IQ, and, and many, many other things. And do we need to be convinced that fluoride is toxic? They used to use it as a rat poison, and as a roach poison, uh, in the 30s and 40s, before we started fluoridation. And there's one other absurd aspect of fluoridation in, in terms of the toxicity of fluoride. The chemical that we add to the drinking water in fluoridation 
is not pharmaceutical grade fluoride as you have in dental products and toothpaste. It is actually the hazardous waste collected from the fertilizer uh, factories. Uh, for about a hundred years, two very toxic gases, hydrogen fluoride and silicon tetrafluoride, were released into the atmosphere in the conversion of phosphate rock to phosphate fertilizer, to make it soluble. And th that, those toxic gases damaged the environment, the vegetation, the citrus groves, crippled cattle, and eventually, after about a hundred years, the companies were required to put scrubbers on. Uh, these scrubbers consisted of a spray of water, and that spray of water converts these nasty toxic gases into a substance called hexafluorosilicic acid. And it's that substance which is used for 90% of the water fluoridated in the United States, uses that chemical. The irony is that that hazardous waste product, which contains all kinds of contaminants like arsenic, lead, even radioactive isotopes, they can't dump into the sea by international law, it's far too concentrated to dump locally. It's officially a hazardous waste until someone buys it. So when our water departments buy this chemical, they're converting a hazardous waste into a product, and then they can put it in our drinking water. Now that may sound like an excerpt from an Orwellian novel, but it's not. That is the reality. 184 million people are helping to get rid of hazardous waste via the drinking water in this country. So not only is fluoridation a lousy form of medicine because you can't control the dose, you can't control who gets it, there's no individual supervision and no health agency is tracking side effects which is lousy medicine and to compound that it violates the individual's in right to informed consent to medicine. So not only is using the public water supply a uh, terrible form of medicine. And we haven't done it with any other chemical, any other drug, any other vitamin, any other nutrient. We've never used the water supply to deliver medicine for any other substance. But it's also a terrible way of handling hazardous waste. To use the drinking, the public drinking water to get rid of hazardous waste. Now this is great for the phosphate fertilizer industry. Obviously, they don't have to pay a huge amount of money to send this to a hazardous waste facility, and they're being paid for it instead. So it's a, they go from a red ticket item to a black ticket item. I think it's worth several hundred million dollars a year to them to have this cheap outlet for their hazardous product. But the rest of us, it's, it's preposterous.